Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Lakeside. Um, as we get started, we've got a few announcements to get started with. Um, this coming Monday, or the Women's Book Club will be um, getting together. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have our theology on tap at Belle Isle Brewery again. Um, and, oh, and the other thing, uh, Crafty Cutie's got a um, thank you card from St. Anthony's um, Joyful Beginnings. Um, and the th card is out there on the bulletin board for you to see. Oh, and yes, this is what they made, was the hats, little hats for babies, knitted. Um, and that's what I have. And so but first, before we move on, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you some uh, pictures to embarrass Annie. <laughs> this is graduation Sunday and you Sunday.
graduating this week, um, and that's a huge step. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for being my home church since I was one year old. Um, ever since I've been growing up, uh, I've been I've always been so supported here at this church, um, from selling Girl Scout cookies to graduating now. <laughs> um, thank you guys for buying cookies for so many years. You guys are some of my lo our most loyal supporters. <laughs> um, uh, thank you guys for uh, being so supportive for so many years. Um, so thank you. <laughs> Uh, today in our scripture lessons, we have one from Acts and one from John, and um, the Acts one is kind of the where I'm focusing, and uh, Peter is given a, a dream, and he follows the dream to not um, make a distinction between Jews and Gentiles, and that causes all kind of controversy. So that's where we're at today. Let us um, go to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, you come to us in mysterious ways and challenge us with the Spirit. Help us to listen. Help us to not stifle your spirit and to follow where you would have us go with open hands that embrace all people. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I you to stand as we sing our gathering hymn. <coughs> to worship. God, in the darkest nights we can still have hope. Love. The coldest winters can still have warmth. Love. Standing by ourselves, we don't feel alone. Love. Finding our way in the dark isn't as hard as we thought. Love. There's help for the lost. Love. There's bed for the tired. Love. There's food for the hungry. There's shelter for the homeless. When there's, love. there's relief for the sick. When there's, love. there's time together. When there's love. We can accomplish anything. When there's love. We can stop the fighting. When there's love. We can hear cries of hopelessness. When there's love. We can find that one special person. When there's love. We can choose the right path every time. We can be your children. Amen. Amen. Let's join together our opening hymn.
join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, you don't keep a record of our wrongs. You're patient and kind and celebrate when we accept. We dance when we do things the way we we're supposed to. Your son knew how to love. Your son left people, turned away, and left him. Even oh, the ones that come on the cross. We are troubled and kind. We are in love. That is not how you taught us. If you loved us this way, none of us would make it to the kingdom. Thank you for never failing us to remind you what we do. We will always love us and be embraced by you, O God. We will try to love as you have just loved. Be patient with us, God. Amen. I invite the children to come forward for a children's conversation. So what does this person do? this person do? What does this person do? <coughs> this game makes me think about our Bible story for today. Jesus was... This makes me think about our Bible story for today. Jesus was teaching his friends the disciples, he was getting ready to go to heaven, and he wanted them to be ready too. He told them, you can't go where I'm going, but when I leave, I want you to love others as I loved you. Then they'll know you're my disciples. Like in our guessing game, you knew what the person in the picture was because of what the person looked like and what the person was doing in the picture. Jesus says that when we love others, They'll know we are his friends. People will be able to know you're a friend of Jesus by what you do and how you treat others. Who wants people to know you're Jesus? Let us pray. God, we want others to know we are Jesus' friend. Help us to love others like Jesus loved us. In Jesus' name, amen.
But today's scripture reading is from Acts chapter 11, verse 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying in a trance, praying and in a trance. I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds in the air, of air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up to heaven, and that very moment three men sent to me from Cicere arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not make a dis- distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house, and he told us how he sent the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you enter and which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us in the beginning. And I remembered the Lord of the, the, and I remembered the word of the Lord and he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the gift that he gave us, we, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God, when they heard this, they were silenced and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now let us join together in our hymn of preparation.
Hey, hey, bros! Yeah, some people are trying to sleep. You. Yeah, but, huh? You wanna turn the music off? Golly day. be blood. There will be blood, my man. Get ready for the Reaper. Get ready for the Reaper. Actually, just wondering if, um, if perhaps you could turn your music down a little bit. Oh yeah, no. Thank sure, you. no problem. Sorry, sorry about that. Thank you. No yeah, problem. yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good night. All right. Yeah. Well, you have a good night too. gospel reading today is John chapter 13 verse 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little, little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me and I will say to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you will love one another just as I have loved you. Also, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's certainly nice to have the youth uh, on New Sunday today involved with everything. So thank you guys. So the story we heard in Acts of Peter defending himself before the believers in Jerusalem is, you may not know, is critical to the Christian faith. It helped open the door to include believers who didn't or could not adapt adopt the lifestyle of con consent with the Jewish purity laws. Aside from that, we don't really trouble ourselves much with the particulars of this passage. It seems fairly foreign, as most Christians don't live according to a faith based on dietary laws or practices. 
it can be hard for us to imagine what useful wisdom we might gain from this passage. However, this is the pivotal realization on which the rest of the book of Acts turns. It sounds as if Peter's being called to the carpet for breaking the rules. He had been eating with those uncircumcised people, and a similar charge had been against, leveled against Jesus about eating with sinners. So Peter's in good company here, but it didn't make the confrontation with the Jerusalem leaders any more easy. He had eaten with and accepted the hospitalities of the Roman centurion Cornelius and his family in Caesarea. Now, to be clear, Peter does not claim before his critics that he all should just abandon their dietary practices and eat whatever that is set before them. He is simply follows the connection between the foods that have been unclean and the Gentile people who have been considered unclean. As at the very moment these three men sent me to Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were, and the Spirit told me to go to them and not to make a distinction between us and them. Peter's argument may seem kind of weak to us, but, it, but it's enough to convince his critics. It shows the power of an idea of what person, a person who ate defined who they were. Peter finally listened to the, and acted on the dream the third time. Thankfully, the Spirit did not give up on him. Peter did not come to his, his new insight with, about the inclusion of Gentiles without some necessary convincing, though, a lot of prayer, and without, with a willingness to change, because Peter was willing to take a step beyond what he had known. He was able to see Cornelius and others received the Spirit and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And this opened the mission to the Gentile world, which threw open the door to people like you and me. This is the second time Peter's dream is mentioned about food. Peter's dream was powerfully transformative experience for him and a sign and a guide for us all. It forced him to overcome the barrier that his diet had always set up between himself and others who were not Jewish. It all asked him to consider how we can cross similar boundaries that exist between ourselves and others, often arbitrarily. What is at stake is the tension between those drawing narrow circles of inclusion around the gospel and others who are busy explaining the circle, expanding the circle until God's children had a, all God's children had a place at the table. When Peter was confronted by Jesus' followers in Jerusalem about his association with non-Jewish believers, they really asked him nothing about the worthiness of the not Jewish non-believers. Instead, they focused on one thing that, that mattered to them. Why did you go to those uncircumcised men and eat with them? In response, Peter doesn't make a reasoned argument about the need for openness or about an all-encompassing grace of God. He simply relates his dream about food that revealed the truth to him. The Spirit told me to go with them and to not make a distinction between them and us. The vision came to him, and he was called by others to come and heal and preach and baptize. God was speaking through him. Who was he to resist? A change of heart comes when one sees the Spirit at work in other people, in other people's stories, those who are strangers, recognizing them that it is the same Spirit that works in one's own life. People need to first see God at work in surprising ways and living for, in others. Fortunately, God had a witness that day, someone who was paying attention. Peter was a pivotal feature, figure in the rock whose confession changed the dynamic of the Jesus followers and Jesus' relationship with his followers and opened up the door to discipleship. Remember the promise that the risen Lord made to his disciples that they would receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The fulfillment of this promise is nowhere seen more evident than this boldness of Peter's testimony in Jerusalem. God empowered Peter and an ordinary <laughs> fisherman to play a significant role in the mission of the church. God enables ordinary people to be witnesses to the gospel. This can be frightening because it makes our own excuses look weak, that we're not gifted enough, that we're not old enough, we're not young enough, we're not whatever enough, we're not good enough to do get the job done. 
But God has always had the audacity to choose ordinary people to do extraordinary things in the service of God's reign. Such a realization should give us hope and strength, or strengthen our resolve to join the great cloud of witnesses, all of which ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I think in the back of Peter's mind might have been the foundational words that we hear in the gospel today. The disciples were all at the table with Jesus. This would be their last time together to gather and to break bread. He washed their feet, and he said to some, that someone would betray him. He said that someone would deny him. This approaching crisis would take his life that loomed ahead. It was unavoidable. And then those final words, those powerful words, a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. You are to love one another. This will become your unique signature in the world. The folks way will see your true identity, your essence. This will be your ultimate reason for being. There's actually nothing original or brand new in these words. The commandment to love goes back much, much further than Jesus himself. It's one of the themes that can be found throughout again and again in the Hebrew scriptures. And Jesus had certainly repeated those words throughout his ministry during his own life of flesh and bones. What then was so special, uh, what nuance that made this final mandate so special and so memorable as it is down to this very moment today? I believe that it was his qualifying phrase that Jesus added to these words, love one another. He made it quite specific by saying that they were to love one another as he had loved them, as I have loved you. In other words, the unique way that Jesus incarnated those words, that ancient ideal, was to become a pattern of how the disciples, which includes us, are to love one another. Here is one of those where the famous phrase of the imitation of Christ ideal got its beginning, its origin, and it raises an inspiring question. Exactly, how did this one who became what we are so we could understand more fully who God is actually and realistically love? The question then is, how did Jesus love? Jesus' love was unique to each person. Jesus loved each person where they were at and met them as if they were none other person in the world to love like that. This may seem like a goal that is beyond our reach, but never forget that we're made in that image of that extraordinary love. It is at least an ideal which we could reach and even strive for, one that we can accomplish with God's grace. The way Jesus loved was not only very individual and personal, but it was also increasingly universal. Those eyes out of which he looked when he lived upon this earth were never filled with contempt or disdain. Even when he spoke words uh, that assumed harshness, it was not because of con out of concern that he felt those words to whom he addressed. They were never words of hatred. We must never forget the opposite of love is not anger or hostility, but indifference. But there is not one example in all the Gospels of Jesus ever turning away from another one, as if it was happened that one was made no difference to him. Jesus loved each person as he met, as if there was no other in the world to love, and he loved every single person the same. This was the foundational for the disciples as the leaders of Jerusalem as they confronted Peter for breaking their rules. What's more amazing than Peter's vision and discernment of the Spirit was how the leaders of Jerusalem actually responded. They listened. They were open. They were open to the new reality that Peter envisioned. They could have said, you're out of your mind. This is totally wrong. We've never done it that way. They could have quoted him line and verse of scripture and proved him to be breaking in violation of the law because he was. Instead, they were able to listen and adapt to the spirit because they believed that the spirit was leading them. Peter told them, the spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between us and them. Perhaps they remembered how Jesus loved and decided that they should love others as he had loved them. And so they praised God, saying, Then God was given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Perhaps 
Rather than block the Holy Spirit's movement, we could ride the wave of the gospel's success and rejoice when we are given the opportunity to offer new life. Susan Guthrie, an Episcopal priest and author of the book Grace Window, Grace's Window, tells the story of the power of love to make things new, even in this earth. She writes, a friend of mine who served in the military during World War II and now at the Nun was once at a conference with two men, a German and American. As they were wiped, as they, as they wiped dishes one evening at dinner, after dinner, they exchanged stories about the war. The American told the horror that he felt as a young pilot during a particular savage bombing of a city in Germany. He had orders to bomb the hospital, which he would know by the huge red cross painted on the roof. The second man, after regaining his composure, revealed that his wife had been giving birth to their baby in that hospital when it was being bombed. Suzanne tiptoed out of the room as the two men fell into each other's arms, weeping. Imagine being in heaven at the end of the world where we might fall, weeping upon one another with waves of reconciliation breaking upon us as we adjust ourselves to this new dimension of pure love. When the Holy Spirit empowers us to adjust ourselves to this dimension of pure love, we are part of the new earth and the new heaven being made that Christ is bringing about. As we go about our business in the church, the world is watching. Do we have anything to offer that is different from the division and divisiveness in the world? Can we listen to each other and seek to discover where God's spirit is leading us? Can we extend the table so that everyone has a place? The challenge, or the good news really, is the spirit is leading us still today. When we love like Jesus loves, we will be following that spirit. Jesus would not have given us this new commandment if it was impossible to follow. So I hope you know today that you are loved by God, that that is at your core of who you are. This is the way we can actually choose to live in the world. Like the words of our hymn of discipleship today, may we believe that love can change the world. May we never stop believing this dream of a better world. May we never stop believing in the impossible. You and I, with the help of God's unfailing grace, can grow into the wonder and loving each person as if they were none other in all the world to love and loving everyone as Jesus would love. Amen. Now let us go to God as we sing our hymn of response. He lives. Invite the ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, you have given us a gift of faith. Through this gift, we see all people as God's children. Respond to God, your generous love, that we may love one another as you have loved us. We offer our gifts this morning, hoping that they will be used to show the world your love. Yes, they will know by our love 
and not judgment. May we, the world, know we belong to you by seeing compassion, not condemning people, by seeing love expressed in hope and healing. All this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. If we had other graduates, we do. We're going to have a blessing for the graduates. And I invite you to... Um, so I invite you to lift your hand up, however you want to do it, but be in prayer with us as we pray in this. Let us go to God in prayer. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless Annie as she now finishes this course of study. We thank you for those who have taught and worked beside her and all who supported her along the way. Walk with, uh, uh, with this graduate as she moves to the next phase of life. Take away her anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen her many talents and skills. Instill in her confidence in the future that you will be by her side. May her energies be gathered up and used for good of all people for the sake of Jesus Christ. And now, uh, to go into the great th Thanksgiving, it says prayers of the people, but I didn't put the communion in there. We're going to do communion, because we're not following a bulletin, we're following the Spirit. <laughs> I just forgot. Um, let us join together in the great Thanksgiving. God be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God. You have been our greatest joy and greatest thanks, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power, and you formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you and refused to trust and obey, you did not reject us, but you claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. And then in the fullness of time, out of your greatest love of the world, you sent your only Son to be with us and to redeem us, to heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you and join voices from the choirs of angels and with prophets and the apostles or martyrs and with all the faithful of every time and place who have forever seen your glorious name and praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and earth are full of your glory. In the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, O God of majesty. Blessed is Jesus, your Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing, his touch, and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice, and he was mocked and despised. He came with peace in his heart, and was met with violence and death. By your power he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command the gates of death were opened. The one who was dead now lives, and the one who has humbled himself was raised and rule over all creation. The one who ascended on high is with us, as he promised. On the night before he died, he took bread, and he gave thanks to you. And after he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day when heaven and earth shall be one. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice and dedicated to your service. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, the bread that we break and the cup that we bless, may it be communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast united in ministry in every place and every time. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. In union with the church in heaven and on earth, we pray, O oh God, that you would fulfill your eternal purpose in us and the world. Keep us faithful, your service, until Christ comes in final victory. And we joyfully feast with all of your saints. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray the prayers that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom. Glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, many that we are, are one body, for all partake of the one loaf. Though we come to the table as hurting and broken individuals. It's through participation in the body of Christ that we find wholeness. Thanks be to God. The cup of which you share is the sharing in the blood of Christ. And we drink in the blessings of God. Thanks be to God. The table is set. The feast is ready. All are invited. We have our helping hands baskets over here. And if anyone wants gluten-free communion, we have the individual packages over here. I invite you to come after the choir receives. <coughs>
now let us join together in our prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of discipleship. Join together in our closing benediction. Jesus gave a new commandment to love one another. Jesus loves us. We should love one another. Go forth to serve. Go forth to love. We go forth with love. Blessing. Amen. Now go forth in the peace of Christ, loving God and serving your neighbor in all that you do. Amen. some cookies and punch in the fellowship hall.